Um, to ask the Minister the number of electrical plumbing, carpentry, joinery and bricklaying and stone laying apprentices respectively waiting to progress their off the job training in phases 2, 4 and 6 respectively across Sullis and the higher education sector in tabular form and if you make a statement to the matter. I suppose essentially what I want to know is where the backlogs are in the various apprenticeship sectors because there are many. Thanks, uh, thank Deputy McNamara for his question and I know he's raised this previously in the House as well. The backdrop to the current waiting list for essential practical training for apprentices is the extended shutdown of on-site learning activity from March 2020. The closure of education and training facilities in response to the COVID pandemic precluded access to after-job training. The very welcome growth in registrations has compounded these pressures. However, the education training system is responding energetically to reduce the waiting times. My department has been advised by Solis that currently there are 8,208 apprentices waiting to access off-the-job training, of which 7,228 are waiting for phase two and 980 for phase four and six. It can be expected that at any one time, some apprentices will be waiting a planned intake but the numbers currently awaiting are high and reflect the unprecedented circumstances from March 2020. My department has also been advised that as of the 17th of May 2022, apprentices waiting for all phases of after-job training included 3,616 electrical, 1,162 plumbing, 844 carpentry and 98 brick and stone laying. Implementation of a major response plan to address waiting lists is well advanced. In order to introduce additional capacity, capital funding of 20 million euros was provided in 2020 to extend and upgrade facilities. Additional funding of 17 million has been provided to Solace and the HEA to underpin the plan to reduce backlogs, 6 million of which is being invested in additional instructors with over 100 additional posts approved. With progress in the pandemic and the public health management, classes returned to their full intake of 14 to 16 apprentices last September. More than 8,400 apprentices, or over 70% of those delayed by the COVID-19, uh, have now progressed. This includes over 700 final year apprentices who have been fast-tracked to complete their qualification. Craft apprentices waiting for phases four and six is expected to be cleared later this year with the majority of phase two waiting lists targeted to be cleared by the end of 2022. Solace and the HEA are continuing to work with the education and training providers to provide with, with the support of my department to identify further solutions that will address waiting lists fully consistent with the management of the quality, standard and safety of the apprenticeship provision. Thank you very much. Um, Minister, I suppose, so if I'm correct in taking from your figures that as many people are waiting now as have been cleared from the waiting list, which, and I do appreciate the efforts that the government are making, uh, but that is still worrying. The Minister um, has made a lot of pronouncements recently about the necessity of a greater parity of esteem between people going into apprenticeships and people going into the more academic sector, and I completely agree with that. But if you look at the emphasis created on making sure that there weren't backlogs, in the higher education sector, in, in sort of the um, uh, practical side of medicine, dentistry, etc., <laughs> compared to the waiting lists which have accrued, it doesn't reflect that government priority. Now, the Minister has also announced very ambitious targets with regard to getting uh, new people into the trade sector. Now, Minister, I don't know whether you share Minister Harris's ambition. Maybe not many in this House share his level of ambition, but I suppose the problem is sometimes. Um, sometimes the performance of the department that he leads doesn't quite match up to his level of ambition. And I'm worried that that will be the case in this instance. But I do welcome the ambitious targets, the announcements that you're making. But at this stage, we have to say that there are as many people waiting as there are people who've been cleared through the apprenticeship system. And we need, if we are going to attract those apprentices, and we need them for... We, we all agree that we need them, then you know, we're going to have to make sure that they can be guaranteed that they're going to get through their apprenticeship in the time period set out at the start of it, and it doesn't change from four to seven years in the middle of it. 
Yeah, yeah thanks, Deputy. I, I think we all share the, the, the same ambitions, and I think it's good to see that those ambitions are, in the main, being realised. The, the Apprenticeship Action Plan set out a target to achieve 10,000 new apprenticeship registrations per annum by 2025. And I can tell you, uh, for the record, in the year 2021, a record 8,607 new apprentices were registered on the system. And that's an increase of nearly 40% on the, compar on the comparable year, um, which is 2019, which is pre-COVID um, pandemic, as you'll know. Um, just, just in relation to the, the, the backlog, so we, we have the added problem, which is a good problem, of a good surge of new people coming into the system. So in terms of the, the clearance projections, um, it, it has fallen and it has risen again due to, uh, as we've just said, the, the number of people signing up. In August of 2021, there was 11,859 in the backlog. January, that fell to 9,500. In February, it fell to 7,700. Uh, and it has rise, risen slightly further again due to the, in, the surge of new apprentices coming into the system. I suppose, uh, again, I'm slightly concerned that that sounds a little bit like the Taoiseach explaining the inadequacies of our health system, that we're sort of victims of our own success, that our um, life expectancy has risen. And of course, with an increase in life expectancy, there are more people who need uh, uh, hospital care. With the increase in apprentices, there are more people who need to have their apprenticeships uh, provided for by the state. I don't think that that is a, a, you know, something that didn't occur to your department. I hope it did. But we still come down to the fact that we have these waiting lists. And while something is being done, I appreciate something is being done, I think it's fair to say that not enough has been done because there are still people who's who are looking at doing, you know, who are four years through a four-year apprenticeship and looking at having to do another two or three years. So, you know, it is unfair for them, it is inadequate for them, and it's not just bad for them personally, it's bad for attracting other people into apprenticeships, and it's bad for the house building sector and the trades that they are going to work in because, you know, it's supply and demand. So I do think that I appreciate work is being done, but more does need to be done, Minister. And, you know, victims of our own success line, it only cuts it so far. Yeah, well, I, I think it's important to reiterate there was significant money applied at creating additional capacity. I, I've explained to you uh, the additional number of um, posts that have been approved, over 100. There was also other interventions in terms of um, the delivery structures of phase two after job training uh, and to facilitate a, a third intake. Um, last December, there was an opt-in rapid employer assessment for phase seven. So there was a lot of um, new changes brought in. But I think we also have to be mindful, uh, and I think we'll all agree on this also, that you have to protect the quality of the, um, the training that's been provided and the quality of the, the whole entire apprenticeship system. It is challenging, but um, we're dealing with it, and I think we're making progress on it.